find ourselves always hard to do that and hard to fear being like us, no matter where we are. Just a couple of announcements. Um, yes, we are still having Swayze today. For I just checked weather.com. This is supposed to keep clearing up. So, um, might be a little damp, but we can be there. Just remember to bring your own chairs, please. I'm still, you know, social distance. But we'll be back to having our outdoor worship together once again. Um, that's all. Yeah. I can't look one about it. Okay, Audrey, can you say something else? Uh, yes, I received the, yesterday from Jane Primario about the Warren County Singers are having a clothing drive Saturday, May 22nd at uh, Presbyterian Church in Washington, and all donations are accepted, and donations are not shredded. So, clean wearable clothing, coats, shoes, boots, belts, purses, backpacks, suitcases, towels, linens, Blankets, curtains, suits, gowns, stuffed toys, and small clean toys, also accepted useful bicycles. So I have put some of these flyers in the back if anybody is interested, whatever. Um, and also, for future reference, September 25th, I believe it is, it's a Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, there is a shredding event uh, in, the, in the calendar so that if you've got shredded stuff that you want to get rid of, there's a way to do it. Also, in the back, there's a sign up for Mother's Day carnations. We're going to do uh, whatever we can. And anybody online, just give me a call and I will add their name to the list. Fine. There's a card in the back, a sign from Lori Borowski. She was having or is having an MRI. She's having problems with her neck and back. Yes, Linda. Trustees today, ready right for service of uh, the list as well. For those of you who um, gave me cards, I got them to David on Tuesday, and he was very appreciative. So, um, just so you know that. I think that really brightens his day to know he's still thought of it. I'll talk more about him though when I have time for prayers with people. Um, I'm hoping you remember our first hymn, Gentle Shepherd. I'll ask Jim to play through it once. And um, I'll go to stay seated. And we'll sing through it twice.
Please join me in focusing our worship. Loving Shepherd, you know our names, you care for us. When we are tired, you lead us to green pastures and still waters. When we face darkness and death, you walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, you fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, you feed us at your table. When we are joy-filled, you have filled our cups to overflowing. When we worship, you are with us. Thanks be. Amen. Before we get into times of prayers, um, I just to ask that any choir members who are here, if you want to just come forward at the church real quick. I want to just talk with you um, two minutes. So now is our time to raise before God and one another our joys, our cares, our concerns. Um, obviously, we continue our prayers for David on the situation, but are there any other prayer requests this morning? Yes, well, it's um, well, uh, George had his surgery, and he's recuperating. He's a little bit in discomfort, but nothing more. He's feeling <laughs> there is a silver one. Okay. <laughs> For him, yes. <laughs> yes, Audrey. I have a joy that I want to share with everybody on Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday morning on the Today Show. Uh, they had in the courtyard out there 30 immigrants who were essential workers. They were doctors and nurses and healthcare workers, and they were sworn into citizenship. And I sat there in my kitchen and I cried because to me, this is what America is all about. And uh, the, the, the stories of these people and how they struggled and how they you know, came from various countries all over the world and now are American citizens and have, have you know, really earned their citizenship by just working here. It was very uh, uplifting. On that same line, um, I'd like to put this prayer of thanks. Um, I don't know about any of you, but I was holding my breath through that Derek Chauvin trial. And it could have been a very different world we live in had the verdict gone differently. And so I am thankful that there was a ray of hope. February, um, I had a nephew that went out to Utah, skiing with two other friends, and uh, he collapsed out there. Uh, he had an aneurysm, and that was February, the beginning of February. February 5th, he was declared dead. So yesterday, they had a uh, service, a memorial service for him, and it was a two and a half hour service, just people talking and telling stories about him, which we never really knew he was that way. <laughs> I mean, they were comical, but uh, it was just <coughs> wonderful. And your nephew's name? Scott. Um, and along those same lines, I'm sorry, maybe I'll get to you. Said, along those same lines, but while I think of it, uh, for those of you who remember Peter McCabe, um, he was part of our disciple group here and then became a large part of our DDS program here. And whatever, he passed last year to Alzheimer's. Uh, his partner contacted me and there will be a memorial service for him at St. Peter and Paul's Church in Great Meadows on Thursday, May 6th at 11 a.m. If you care to go. Uh, just, that's just an FYI. Yes, Peggy. And a prayer for Reverend Fowler. Let us pray. Gracious, almighty, eternal God, once again, Lord, we have gathered in your house. We come, Lord, because you, you call us. You have shaped us. You have you have created us, and we know that we are yours. 
And we give you our thanks and praise for your constant presence with us in our lives, for walking with us through all of life's challenges, but also sharing in our joy and just bringing us together as a community. And for all these blessings, Lord, we can only say thank you and live our lives as you would have us live and give you our thanks and praise. But also, Lord, as we come, we come with cares and concerns in our hearts that we know we can place on your altar. For you have heard the prayers of your children throughout generations and have answered so faithfully. And we just add ours to all the others. And this day, Lord, we continue to pray for David, who is longs to be home with you. And Lord, we just pray that you will call him home, free him, heal him in this way, so he can live at your table forever. So if it be your will, call him home and bless him, we pray. And Lord, we just thank you for watching over George as he went through his surgery and for the recovery he is making. Um, we just pray your blessing on him that he continues to heal and get well and give Alex the strength to, to do the work that she needs, now needs to do. Um, but bless them both, we pray. And Lord, our country is an amazing country, and when we see when so many come just to be a part of it, to help us out, all those essential workers that Audrey was talking about, and to be wanting to become citizens, we thank you for their blessing and their presence among us, their help, their work, their knowledge, and all they do to add to how what our country is about. And Lord, I raise a prayer of thanks that there is um, hope through that show on trial. Uh, it hasn't always gone that way, but to see this happen and that you pronounce guilty, Lord, um, gives us hope that justice is coming, justice will be served. I pray for from this day forward. And Lord, we pray for Scott's family and the grieving that they still continue. This pandemic has made it so hard to offer comfort, to be together, to offer condolences um, when someone passes. And it is so good to hear of how many gathered and how long it took to celebrate his life. So continue to bless them and carry them and comfort them through their grief. And we also pray for Reverend Fowler, who is struggling with some health issues. I ask that you give the doctors wisdom, wisdom the knowledge, and whatever they need to help him return to fullness and fullness of health. And as always, we pray for this world, where there is war, let there be peace, where there is oppression, let there be freedom, where there is hunger, may they be fed, where there is illness, may they be healed. Through us, through others, may this world come to know the peace and the kingdom you have promised. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us your day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our first reading today comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 3. And he writes, We know what real love is because Jesus gave his life for us. So we ought to give to up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. If we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive Him from Him whatever we ask, because we obey Him and do the things that please Him. And this is His commandment: we must believe in the name of His Son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as He commanded us. Those who obey God's commandment remain in fellowship with Him, and He with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. And if you would stand for the gospel reading, which comes from John 10. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him. He isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. I am a good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me, just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold, and I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so that I may take it up and back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have authority to lay it down when I want to and also to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. I am the good shepherd. Jesus says these five words three times in the first four verses. When he says something like this so repetitively in such a short amount of time, it's an, uh, an automatic heads up. He's trying to convey something. Something more than the words seem to just say, simply. And if you're like me, and you think about this phrase, I am the good shepherd, and of course, we hear St. John's have him as the gentle shepherd right behind us in the stained glass um, behind the altar. It's a very comforting, bucolic, idyllic image that comes to mind. Uh, today, the song for today is the 23rd Psalm. If you know that, if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside green pastures and still waters, and this is microphone is killing the Italian in me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, he still waters, he restores my soul. Uh, let's face it, most of the time when we think of shepherds, it's a very uh, beautiful, clear day, nice green pastures, and sheep are grazing, and the shepherd is under the tree, maybe chewing on a piece of grass, and it's always peaceful and calm. Well, because Jesus said these words, I'm, I'm going to probably explode that image for you today. Because there's so much packed into those five words. And we're going to start off with the first two, I am. Now, if someone will get a gold star today, if they can tell me where else in Scripture those words come about. Audrey gets the gold star. <laughs> Thank you. Do you remember the passage where Moses is talking to God in front of the burning bush, and God finally convinces him to go to the Pharaoh to free the people? And Moses asks, But what is your name? Who shall I say is sending me? 
And you know, there's a couple times he goes, I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. But the last thing God says is, tell them, I am has sent you. It's God's name. And Jesus used the exact same words, ego me, is it what it is in Hebrew? And he used that exact from Exodus when he said those words. To start off with those words would be to remind the crowd that was around him. They were the Jews and the Pharisees. Now remember, all Jewish men had to memorize the first five books of scripture. How, how, how do you guys rank up those men who are here? Not even close. <laughs> um, so they would have caught on to that, that use of that name, I am. And because Jesus used that, it means, it can give several meanings to this phrase. First off, it could be say, and I'll admit, this is the least taught and least convincing um, way to understand it, is that God is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. God is the good shepherd. Now, just before this passage, Jesus has healed some man who had been, I forget, lame or blind for years, and everyone's shocked, and everyone's, you know, how did you do that, how did you do whatever? And he goes to say, I am the good shepherd. So in a way, it's saying, you know, God takes care of us. And um, why are you surprised almost? I am the good shepherd. Second way to understand it is that Jesus is saying, you know, I'm doing what God is asking me to do. God has made me shepherd. A good shepherd. And so all that I do is in honor of God. And the last way to look at those first two words is to say that knowing that the original crowd would have made the connection to Moses. Jesus is alluding to that just as Moses became God's servant, at that point, he went to free God's people. So that is why I'm here. I am God's servant, being obedient and doing the will of God. All that in those first two words. Then we come to the word good, the good shepherd. How do you define good? And I tried to do it. It's one of those quirky words. I know it when I see it, but I have a hard time defining it. Some will just say, well, it's the opposite of bad. You know, it doesn't get you very far. But the word used in um, Greek was kalos. And it is packed with meaning. It is defined as that which is ordered, sound, noble, ideal, model, true, com competent, faithful, and praiseworthy. All that in that one little word. Jesus was saying he was just, he was no run-of-the-mill shepherd. He was the good shepherd. And note it's, it's the good shepherd, not a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd, the only good shepherd. This implies that Jesus, along with being you know, embodied with strength and power, there's also sympathy and kindness and mercy. All because he chose to use that one word, kados, for good. And the last word to think about is that word shepherd. Again, back to that you know, hallmark and art and stained glass windows and everything had him as such a, that image is such so gentle and so demure and so quiet and peaceful and almost romantic when you think of a shepherd. And because most, there aren't many sheep around here, there aren't any shepherds around here, um, we lost what that job was really like. It was a dangerous job. It was a risky job. If you, you know, in today's passage, it talks about, you know, the higher hand um, when the wolf comes. They had to protect their sheep from wild animals. If you remember the story of King David, uh, when he, well, when he was a kid, not king yet, it was David and Goliath. When he comes up to the encampment where, you know, the, 
they still haven't gotten Goliath killed yet, and he volunteers, and they want him to wear an armor, and he figures he can't. He goes, listen, I have fought bears to protect my sheep. So when you think of a shepherd, it was an extremely dangerous and risky job. But it was also considered a menial job. It was low ranking on the totem pole. No one aspired to be a shepherd. And so someone, one of the commentators called them rough around the edges. And also they were, um, I'm trying to think of the other words they used. They, they were a rough craft. More instead of this bucolic, pretty, comforting thing, think more like um, longshoremen working on the docks. Only because they were out in the fields most of the time. They weren't in polite society, and they weren't, you know, worried about the, the uh, politeness of how to act. And let's face it, how many, well, I don't know how many of you can, but you, you can imagine. Do you think you would act and eat and dress and everything the same when you're camping as when you're having Thanksgiving dinner? Of course not. You know, there's a relaxation when you're, you know, not around a lot of people. So that's what shepherds were like. They were more roughhoused and rough around the edges and, and not this simple, colorful uh, thinking person. But the most important thing to remember about shepherds is that they lead. Shepherds lead their sheep. According to one of the commentators, now if any of you know differently, you can say, just shout out. But according to them, they did a good comparison between cows and sheep. Cows get driven from behind. Think of your cowboy movies when there's a roundup and all the cowboys are on their horses and their dogs and they're behind the herd of cows and they push the cows in the direction they want them to go. According to the commentator, if you tried this with sheep, they would bolt and run behind you. Sheep like to follow. And that's why Jesus says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me and they listen to my voice. They want to be called. They want to be pulled. It's like, you know, they get to know your voice like your dog gets it. Come when you call them. So Jesus is always out in front. And I'm sure this is not new to most of you, if not all of you. But yeah, Jesus, I always, you know, that image has always been there, that I follow Jesus. But what I'm hoping comes through today with this sermon and learning, just hearing these five words that Jesus used three times, is the image and the importance that he's not this gentle little thing calling <coughs> us like, come on, Skippy, now let's come along. We've got the image I now have after putting this together. He's more like a linebacker. You know, and the linebacker wants to clear the way so the guy with the ball can get to the goalpost. This is the Jesus I now see as shepherd. Rough around the edges. Um, maybe not you know, used to the social norms, but still filled with strength and power and kindness and mercy and sympathy and all those blessings that he gives us. And so when life gets challenging with anything, don't think of it as you're, you're, you're kind of just skipping down a pretty little trail. You've got a linebacker in front of you, clearing the way, wanting to help you through, to get you through to the other side. And I'm just hoping that whatever that image is needed, you will remember that he is the good shepherd and all that entails. May you be blessed. Amen.
Please join me in responding in faith. Loving, Loving Shepherd, Shepherd, you, you lead and guide, you walk alongside, you prepare, you feed, you call all of your sheep, even those of us who are lost, those of us who constantly stray, those of us who stay close to your comforting staff. We are grateful for the lush green pastures of our lives, and we thank you for the goodness in our lives. There are so many who walk in the shadows of fear, suffering and despair, and so we offer our prayers for the broken and bleeding places in this world. We offer our prayers for the sheep of our own flocks, our families and friends, our church and our community, as well as those sheep and other pastors, for we are all one in you. O loving shepherd, we give you our thanks and praise for we have all we need and will be in you. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 2208 out of the Faith We Sing, verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. <coughs> Thank you.